Hi guys and welcome to or back to my channel and my first summer vlog. Uh, although half of summer have uh, almost half of summer have passed already. Time goes by so fast. But I thought I would uh, as I have done in my previous um, spring vlogs, two spring vlogs, I thought I would show you what I have been up to or what we have been up to so far this summer. It has been <laughs> quite some time since I talked to you last. Uh, times go by, time goes by so fast. Um, but I have been filming a bit on and off. Um, I think it's difficult now. I, I think this is my fourth summer on YouTube and I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself but then I remind myself that I have a lot of new viewers and maybe they have not seen my earlier vlog. So yeah, I hope this is not repetitive but just like I guess many of you uh, our lives are a lot of repetition especially when it comes to things that we like um, so let me see where to start um, the week before we went on vacation my husband he works with people with special needs and uh, when they go on vacation they have to have some somebody with them to help them so that was what he was doing the week before he went to spain for a week so i was a grass widow i had to look it up but i know that that's a term also used in english um so here's a little bit of my experience as a grass widow Good morning guys this week i am a grass widower i had to look the th term up to see if that was something that only norwegian would understand but apparently it comes from german and it was usually used uh, as a term for ladies that had had uh, intimate relations with guys that then left them usually that was outside so that's why the where the grass comes from <laughs> uh, yeah long story but um, my husband is working in Spain this week he's on vacation with his uh, with the people that he he work with I'm sorry I don't know the political correct uh, term but uh, he works works with uh, people with special needs so they have uh, this uh, beautiful place in Spain where they can go on holiday and uh, they have to bring and they need to bring uh, somebody with them so uh, I'm alone so that means that everything falls on me which is uh, a bit um, um, unusual because uh, I usually don't do a lot of the things I now do uh, but it's been okay as well the most challenging bit actually has been to sleep stay in the house all by myself for a week uh, but it has been okay so I thought I would just uh, show you what I now do in a day when I'm kind of doing both mine and my husband chores so I hope you enjoy so I've already been up giving the horses food and eating breakfast taking a sh taking a shower uh, so now I'm going to take them out on the pasture let's see if they're ready hi are they clear oh fine are they clear yeah 
but Lorca is very ready. Can you see her talking? Look at her nose. <laughs> yeah. The difficulty. is always in such a hurry so trying to get her to learn to calm down a bit but that's not easy when it's green grass on the other end for horses it's actually true when they say the grease is always greener the grass is always greener on the other side uh. And uh, not only is the grass greener here than at home, but I don't know if you can see, but we have uh, the only, now they only have this part of the fields because on the other side there is uh, what they are going to eat this summer, not the white flowers. But hopefully there are some, a little bit of grass as well. Mm, when we had this, we have, we, we, we have had a lot of cold weather this spring. And when we do, uh, the grass kind of protects itself by bringing all the sugars up into the grass. That can uh, lead to a terrible infection in horses uh, which go on their <laughs> on their uh, legs uh, Nelly the white and the black one she's had that before uh, and it can be fatal because they can kind of thread their uh, bone through the hoof at the nail of the leg um, so it's terrible. So we usually wait until midsummer, 23rd of June, to put them on this this long grass. Uh, so not to get this. Uh, it's kind of it's it's a kind of. Uh, I think it's a kind of uh, almost like a diabetic uh, response. Uh, they get too much sugar in the blood. Uh, and then it kind of turns on the legs. Yes, that was a lesson in <laughs> how to feed <laughs> horses in the summer. So now I have to go back home and this is something I do when my husband works early. I feed the horses and then I take them here. Uh, summer as winter. They have a, a great big space to to spend the day. So now I'll head back home and do uh, the chores there and the uh, and for the horses it's mocking the stables and the little enclosure we have at home. That is something I usually don't do because I get a migraine when I'm do when I do it. Uh, so far it's been good. I'm very sore, uh, but it's been good, so I'm hoping that is one of the chores I want to get back to doing. Um, so hoping, yeah, I hope I'm, I, I hope I'm going to be able to, even when my husband gets home. Borka, the brown horse, she's a little Houdini, so. We usually don't have electricity on the fence, but now we do. If not, she's off through there and into the neighbor's garden.
we don't have any very poisonous snakes in Norway, but I hate snakes. Uh, so, and they have just gotten their kids, baby snakes, and they like to lay on the road. So I usually stamp my feet not to meet anybody. As I said, there's one, but I think he has been run over. A few days ago, I almost stepped on a baby snake. Uh, uh, what's the English word in Norwegian? It's called hogan. It's the it's the snake that has the mm, pattern on the back. Uh, it's the only poisonous snake I think we have in Norway, and it's not called a snake, but I don't know uh, the English because we differ differ differentiate between snakes and not worms, <laughs> but yeah, the ones that's not big and poisonous, but hogan. Is, and, and the kids are the worst because they don't, they just kind of spray you with all the poison at once. If you're not allergic, it's not fatal, but you don't know until you're bitten. I call this the worm on the snake kill because they love to lay on this road. No one today, thank God. So this is how the garden is looking and you saw my husband installing this beautiful electric fence. Oh my goodness you guys. What's the point of having a pond when it looks like this? Uh, at least we have stopped the bird from the heron from taking any more fish but uh, yeah this is we cannot have it like this but for now it's okay to get He has such separation anxiety.
this. No doubt she would try to take on both that I fear the consequences of that for all involved. I loved. Oh boys. Oh man, thank you. Just celebrate all that looks fifth birthday. to all of you that feels like our property is always so beautiful and put together <laughs> this is the back side of a youtuber's uh, shiny facade uh, this is the back of the stables and this is what happens when I don't uh, keep a um, close eye on my husband he builds these terrible constructions where he can all his junk not just a junk but a lot of junk uh, and as you can see the stables is I think it's about it's almost 20 years old and the backside is not done uh, it's not finished around the windows and we haven't painted and we actually used to be able to just put the uh, droppings from the horses at our neighbors is the farmer it, this is just a woodland and we used to be able to put uh, everything there but then he died and his daughter did not want us to do that so now we have to put it on this old hanger and use the old tractor to pull it away and we have a great neighbor that has allowed us to put it at a corner of her farm so that's that a mess and this is one of the projects i am hoping i can get my husband to do this summer tidy up we started last year and made great progress and then he built this ugly structure <laughs> but uh, all the mess from everywhere else in here so we have to tidy and we have gotten some beautiful cute new uh, habitats in the stables this is the horse's shower and if you can see I'll try to zoom in on the top of that there are some birds building a nest i just had to google to see what they are called they are swallows uh, svaler in norwegian it's not the best thing uh, because we keep disturbing them and they building a nest where we when we put water into the, those hoses now, I don't know what's going to happen uh, because it's the kind of the uh, yeah, it's where we split the hose goes from there up there and then it splits to either side and in the middle of that <laughs> is where they are building their nest i don't know if there are any if there are any eggs there yet but uh, and they keep flying in almost crashing in my head i can go outside and see if i can see them they are such good flyers let me see and as you can see from having almost 
having a winter that wouldn't disappear, we now have a full on summer and just uh, and, and never any rain. No, I can't see that, but they are usually working hard, so I can't wait until the small bird babies hatch. Okay, so that was the mucking on stables. Uh, I'm going to find hay, fill water, and then it's taking a walk with the dogs. I have terrible hay fever, so uh, feeding the horses is usual, usually my husband's job. Uh, so he has packed as many bags, and <laughs> we use IKEA bags to portion out the food. He has packed as many as he could. We don't have enough, so I will eventually have to put on a mask and do it myself, but for now we're good. So I'm taking two for lunch and two for uh, dinner. So it's time for lunch. So I have made yesterday, this is leftovers, mango and avocado salad with chicken and it's very good. Mm. 
my hay fever got the better of me so I had to sleep for a while so now I'm eating dinner and just having um, smoked salmon with scrambled egg on toast <laughs> this is how my dinners usually look look he's not allowed to sit there but I think he thinks that being an old man everything is uh, allowed and he has he has tasted a little salmon so I guess I can blame myself oh, he's so cute So that's the horses back eating their very late lunch or dinner. Um, we feed them about now six o'clock in the evening and then 11 half past 11 at night and then they go to sleep uh, but soon in just uh, yeah, a couple of weeks or a week or so they will be uh, eating grass outside 24 7 for maybe eight weeks I hope yeah but for now it's hay well, my makeup has come out. I don't know if you can even see. It's just dazzling in here. But um, I'm just going to tie my hair in a little low bun, nice and carefree. Mm -hmm.
was the last of my chores done. Could you start to show me up? I have a lot of lights in the garden. I'm going to show you this in daylight, but this is a cute little vignette or spot I have made in the garden. Those solar lights are so fun. I have a lot of solar lights in the garden. Mm. It's, I think it's uh, quarter past eleven at night. Uh, you know, it's we have light almost uh, all night in the summer. So, excuse the house. I want to show you. I just put my tripod down. So being a grass widow went a lot better than I had uh, anticipated. I started off kind of uh, a bit too optimistic or I kind of wanted to uh, prove to myself that I can be, I can manage on my own. So of course I overdid it, uh, but I kind of uh, managed to stop in time. Uh, and uh, I have recently taken back some of the chores that my husband have done for me for several years uh, especially when it comes to the horses uh, because of my neck issues and other things um, so uh, I have been able to kind of uh, pull more of my weight here at home and I love that it went well um, I was uh, a bit afraid that I would not get a lot of sleep because of I have PTSD uh, so sleeping alone is uh, not my favorite thing but that too I was so <laughs> tired when I went to sleep after all the work so it was uh, it went well uh the it went well up until the last day and then one of our horses uh, as i have told you earlier we have had so little rain here in norway uh, so everything has grown very slowly and especially the grass and uh i don't know if i explained i may have done uh, but when we put the horses out to the summer pasture uh, we have to wait until after midsummer because 
uh, if we do that before it may be too much sugar in the grass and the horses can get sick so we kind of hold off on uh, sending, the, sending them to uh, the summer pasture and um, it was too when it gets too a little and, and they get hay in the meantime and some grass but not a lot uh, but for our little Pac-Man eating uh, Nelly, it was not enough. So she ate something that did not agree with her. So I got a sick horse. I have, I don't think I've ever seen her in that much pain. So it was kind of dramatic, <laughs> uh, but it went well. Uh, she bounced back uh, within I think 36 hours I did not have to send for the wet, wet. I managed all on my own and uh, I also managed to uh, put my foot to right through the um, the hanger that we put the uh, the horse manure in and Luckily that went well as well. I could have gotten a bad infection, but it went well. So all in all, it was a good experience. Then my husband came back and we spent some days here at home. And then we went on our boat to uh, a place. It's actually in our own uh, community or uh, county but it is called uh, Oscar's book I have done a separate video a couple of years ago on Oscar's book it's a military it's a f former military fortress of kind uh, it's where the first German boat was sunk here in Norway when we got occupied is that it? Occu occupied yeah um, and I love it it's it, now it's it's uh, kind of a vacation place uh, with a harbor and a hotel and a couple of restaurants and yeah, just beautiful I always take with me some art supplies when I go on holiday or at least I have done for the last years uh, and this year I uh, brought mainly my watercolor paint um, and I found a, a great way to kind of uh, save uh, or make uh, a book of memories from my vacation or my summer. I bought this small uh, watercolor paper um, books and I decided to try to paint one painting every day from my vacation um, and I did uh, I started at Oscar's book uh, I took a picture I took a lot of pictures and then I painted uh, some of the motifs from the photos uh, and I loved it and and I think I can see a uh, uh, kind of uh, development on my skills just from the first week so this is the watercolor book I chose to document our summer in it's a, a square uh, book with, <laughs> with the, uh, watercolor paper and 
and this is the first painting I did. I was not very pleased but I decided and what I did was to write a little bit of what we had done and then a kind of uh, review of what I thought about the painting. Things I can do better and things that I thought was okay in this first painting. The fence is all I thought was okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, and uh, it's a painting of uh, goats. Uh, instead of having uh, someone mow the grass on Oscarsborg, uh, they have goats, baby goats, and uh, mom and and their mother. And these are three of the baby goats. So that was the first. And I think that and these are. This is the first uh, uh, painting where I use kind of a perspective. Uh, I find that so difficult, uh, but I was pretty pleased with this. This is a place where we usually walk the dogs. Uh, and here I uh, try to practice painting water because that is what I found most difficult in this painting. This is the old military building. It's now used for other things but uh, it used to be a military building. Uh, here is one of the cannons and here I thought I had gotten better uh, painting the sky and maybe the sea uh, and I was pleased with the stones but there's a lot <laughs> more to learn here and this is one of the uh, seagulls that live on Oscars Oscarsborg of course it's an island uh, so there's a lot of seagulls, but this one had uh, three small babies. So when we were walking the dogs, it tried to <laughs> to crash into our heads. Uh, so we had uh, many funny situations with it. So I thought it deserved a, a painting. It was sitting on a rusty, I think it's a uh, part of a can. Uh, here I discovered how difficult it is to paint the background uh, and to kind of decide if you want to go into detail or not and here I think I did neither <laughs> uh, so the result was uh, not so good but yeah then we went to our cabin in the mountains and this is kind of a uh, overview of that, or not an overview, but a uh, uh, view from outside the gate. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it looks like a child has painted it. That is my... I was pleased with the gate. I thought that was okay, but the rest not so much. But again, uh, painting sky is something I have gotten better at. Uh, yeah. So not all negative. This is our kind of guest house uh, on the farm in the mountains. And um, there's something with the perspective here that's all wrong. Uh, and I struggle a lot with that. My my husband is very good. He has he he knows technical painting or technical drawing, uh, so he could give me some tips. Uh, but the roof is too high. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I was pleased with some of the background and the surroundings. 
but again a lot to work with and this is uh, you see my husband looking out on um, the lake uh, near our uh, mountain farm uh, and I, there's there's a lot to this that I'm pleased with uh, it's the first time I have painted uh, kind of uh, scenery reflecting in water I think that was okay I think the body of although he thinks I painted his stomach too big I may have done that but there's a there's a lot of small things that I'm pleased with and of course still a lot more to work on this is to this is another old uh, mountain farm uh, that we uh, walk past uh, I love those buildings so I painted that again uh, a lot of improvement but also a lot to work with this is our cabin and here the perspective I think the painting is okay but the perspective is uh, not bad not good I took the picture or the photograph from kind of down here looking upwards so the perspective is all wrong uh, these are two of the young cows that were driven to their pasture uh, that I talked about again a lot I love and a lot I don't love <laughs> I worked a lot on the grass but I'm not pleased again I think it looks a bit like uh, something a child would paint but I like the face of this cow and uh, yeah I think that's about it uh, and here is and these I'm pretty pleased with these are uh, I think these are the first real kind of landscape paintings I've ever done and um, I'm I'm quite pleased with those actually and it's the view from our uh, other cabin higher up in the mountain the one we call the fishing cabin uh, so that was the last from our uh, vacation then we got home and I have decided to try to do more of this uh, I was crafting with my grandson this looks uh, like a cartoon that was not my purpose and I struggled a lot I have some strange angles uh, because this is kind of a loft space or room um, yeah but I like it it will remind me we were crafting together and it will remind me of him this is my last entry this is from my 55th birthday yesterday actually and I got something from uh, a sweet friend uh, and it had this pattern and this will remind me of that day it was a very uh, fun day so it will remind me of her and of my 55th birthday if you have been with i'm sorry about the noise it's a helicopter or plane or something if you have been with me for a while you know that my husband and grandson's paradise on earth is our cabin in the mountains uh, i took you along uh, when we bought it and uh, we love it and uh, of course get to spend way too little time there because we have so much else to do but every time we do go it feels like a real treat 
so we went for a week um, and I don't think we have been there this early uh, in the year before it's usually my daughter that has the cabin this time of year but uh, we went it was the week when the cows came out uh, or was put out on, on the pastures or they are free roam roaming cows and sheep the sheep are was already there um, but the last weekend we were there uh, the farmers uh, drove the cows uh, out and they are so cute um, if you have not seen an earlier video the uh, cabin is kind of an old um, mountain farm but it also have what we call a fishing cabin uh, about a hundred meters higher up in the mountains it's about seven kilometers from the farm uh, old farm um, and during the winter we have not been able to visit it um, uh, we did it was I think you can and we never have <laughs> during the winter uh, we tried one year uh, to make it uh, by uh, cross-country ski skiing uh, but we instead went for a very very long <laughs> trip around uh, but it's a small small cabin without electricity or water or anything and it's right by the uh, lake beautiful lake um, and the scenery is so beautiful and this year because of the heat wave it was so hot so we were able to uh, swim I'm so sorry, that was some neighbors going for a walk and I get so embarrassed sitting here alone talking in English to a camera, but never mind. Uh, yeah, we uh, went and we managed to get to the fishing cabin um, and we cleaned. There's a lot of mice. I don't mind. So it's okay, but we got to clean the cabin and we spent some time there and uh, for the first time we could bathe in the take a bath in the lake because it was so warm. Also got a wash. So that was our second week of uh, vacation. And then, then we came uh, Then we came back to our lovely home. Uh, I always enjoy going away, but I also love coming back. Um, and now we have four weeks here uh, and we have a lot to do. We have to paint a lot. Uh, my husband is doing some repairs on the house. Uh, and I try to tend to the garden. Um, one of the reasons that it's been so long since I uploaded a new video is that, as I said, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself uh, or not doing exciting enough things. Another thing is that we spent uh, the first part of summer kind of fighting with the heron. I think I, uh, I uh, mentioned that in my last vlog. It's a beautiful big bird with, and he loves fish. And of course we have uh, a great 
big pond with great big fish that you can see from I guess very high up because they are on black the black bottom of the pond and they are yellow and orange and must be like a candy store for the heron so first we put up net uh, we did that last year as well and it worked great but then the heron killed some fish through the net he couldn't get them out so he couldn't eat them he just wounded and killed them so yesterday this happened this is one of our biggest largest uh, goldfish it's a female i think she may have been exhausted by being chased by the males so she was a easy prey for for the heron i don't know if you can see but there is where he has injured her kind of poked a hole with his uh, beacon in her in the back of her head she was breathing yesterday so i th tried to put her in quarantine but now she's dead as you may see they are very afraid they almost we hardly see them at all see they're afraid so then my <laughs> husband uh, and I of course had enough so uh, we took out the big guns and installed a ugly big electric fence so the heron has been here three times just in the last couple of hours so now we are taking out the big guns we are installing an electric fence in hope that it will scare it away somehow i hope maybe as you saw he killed one of the largest goldfish and now have managed to scare the fish even more so now the heron is not he's here all the time sitting in the trees watching me trying to get into the pond but he can't uh, so the uh, fence has not scared him we hope that when he got uh, electrocuted and it's not uh, it's not enough uh, um, it, he, it cannot hurt him it, it hurts but he will not be uh, hurt or uh, in any way damaged just scared what was, was what we were hoping for but it has kind of it works as long as it's there I was hoping that when he got his first electric shock he would go away but he hasn't so uh, and our pond is kind of our uh, focal point in the garden um, and I think it looks so ugly with the fence so I'm not sure what we are going to do. We have discussed giving the fish away because it's not... Um, we don't have it, it, it's no use having a beautiful garden pond and not being able to enjoy it at the same time we've had the fish for 15 years so and most of the goldfish are born here or hatched here so yeah i don't know what we are going to do uh somebody said that we could get uh, we have to apply to get the bird removed uh, but I don't think so because it's not the bird's fault that we have made a big, big dinner plate for her or him uh, yeah 
so and they can live for 15 years so um, this can be a problem that stays for a while so yeah I don't know what we are going to do we'll see Is there anything more we've had uh, as I said the heat wave we've had so hot weather here in Norway um, but now the weather is supposed to turn a bit so it's today now <laughs> colder and it's going to rain it has been raining a lot as well this week my daughter and uh, my grandson is in uh, Portugal so we are and he was here but he's gone now <laughs> we are watching uh, the cats uh, and their chihuahua Max, my furry grandson. Uh, he likes to water everything, <laughs> so he's a bit of a challenge. And he's so small, so when he's in the garden, he can easily get through the fence. Uh, and he's not used to being out uh, without a leash. Uh, he is a rescue, so he, we, my daughter has not ha had him since he was a pup. So yeah, he he cannot. Julian can go uh, off the leash, but Max cannot. So uh, a little bit to do this week as well. We are going to paint a lot, and uh, I have tried to. Or I have started I have not been keeping up with my watercoloring but um, I have done a little and I will uh, keep doing that uh, yeah I took myself kind of off uh, off um, what is it called what is it called um, I took myself off a schedule when it came to YouTube, not for it not to be kind of... I didn't want to feel uh, that I had to do it, but at the same time I think I need a bit more structure uh, to do it and do it well. So I think I'm going to work on uh, trying to get maybe a video once a week or once every other week um, I think that would be good but <laughs> I'm not promising anything because time just runs off and uh, oh, if this is if our life is going to move as fast as this uh, and my and my father-in-law says that uh, when you reach an higher age it goes even faster uh, life is too short okay guys i hope you are having a wonderful summer thank you so much for taking the time to come here and spend some time with me i hope you enjoyed the vlog uh, i'm open for uh, suggestions i know that many of you at least those of you who watch my vlogs and that's a lot fewer people than or f a lot less people than watch my decor videos did I show you I promised to show you the garden and the house did I film that I'm not sure if I did I'll give you a little glimpse here okay guys I'm going to say goodbye and hope I see you again soon take care uh, have a wonderful summer and fingers crossed <laughs> I see you again soon bye